200 years ago, Missouri became a state. And I didn't realize until this bicentennial year that it entered the Union in 1821 as the largest state in the country. I also didn't realize that in 1821, it was not as big as it is today. Take a look at the old maps showing Missouri. It's squared off in the northwest corner. It's not a mistake, that triangle of land that gives it the shape we know today did not become part of Missouri until 1837. The original western border was a straight line north and south, leaving off what was called the Platte region. There was a, a big push uh, when you get west of the Mississippi, many at that time wanted the western states to have very square boundaries. Jason Combs is a geography professor at the University of Nebraska. He's written about the annexation. And don't feel bad if you'd never heard this story. He hadn't either, and he grew up there. Uh, I'm from Ashland County outside of Fairfax, a little town, farming town, Fairfax. And I had never heard of the Platte Purchase. I'd never heard of the Platte region. And I think I was in graduate school until I, and it was like, wow. I mean, I didn't even know anything about it. The story is all about westward expansion into new states and territories and steadily pushing the native tribes further and further west. It was always about the settlers wanting land and more land. The Indian Removal Act of 1830 removed the eastern tribes to west of the Mississippi. This includes the infamous journey called the Trail of Tears. A few months later, William Clark of Lewis and Clark fame, now the superintendent of Indian Affairs, headed from St. Louis to what is now Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, to get the tribes of the Great Lakes and the Upper Mississippi to agree to move. They were sent west, beyond the state of Missouri and the Arkansas Territory, into land that included the Platte region, between Missouri's western border and the Missouri River. Uh, Sacks and foxes, there were several bands of Sioux involved, uh, the Omahas, the Iowas, uh, and Otos and Missourians. But like other treaties with the Indians, this one would not hold. The Platte region was rich farmland along the Missouri River, and with no natural border or barrier, white settlers just started moving in to the Indian Territory. For state officials, the solution was annexation. But some in Washington had their doubts. Why make the biggest state even bigger, and a slave state at that? And so the annexation actually took free soil and made it slave territory. There were some who contested that in Congress, uh, but eventually they recognized it wasn't going to upset the balance of power in the Senate, so it did get approved. And William Clark headed up the Missouri River to once again remove tribes, this time from land they'd been given just a few years before. It was Clark's last treaty. He died the following year at the age of 68. The Platte region became part of Missouri in 1837, and it immediately started filling up with settlers. And in 1850, the census in 1850 had 41,092 pioneers. And so that just kind of gives you an idea of 40 plus thousand people had swarmed into that, the Platte region, basically in a decade. So there was obviously a huge demand for that territory. It's called the Platte Purchase because in exchange for the land, the tribes received money, supplies, farm implements, even a blacksmith. But the U.S. government set the terms, and things rarely worked out well for the tribes. Uh, some of the, the leaders for the Native American tribes, I mean, they clearly say, I mean, you know, they were starving. Uh, the, the populations had just been decimated by disease, so they were not in a good position to negotiate. The Platte annexation made the state of Missouri even bigger, but no longer the biggest. That year, Michigan, with its boundaries including parts of the Great Lakes, was admitted to the Union as the largest state. For Living St. Louis, I'm Jim Kircher.